Hello guys and welcome to part 4 of our uh, motorcycle workshop. In this part I will show you how to enhance a already nice custom paint job with some graphics. And uh, we shall start off by cleaning up a little bit. We will not need the badge. Uh, as you can see we have the uh, shadows that we've drawn on top of our combined layer. So we can switch that off as well because we don't need it. Instead what we'll do, we'll switch, on, switch back on the uh, individual layers of the new parts that we've created these four so that should do the trick and um, for the purpose of this demo I'll only work on the tank and once you know how to do it on a tank you'll be able to apply it anywhere else really um, so for to draw the flames what I'll use is a very useful tool called the pen tool which is situated in here and this pen tool allows you to draw what's called paths and those paths later on can be modified and once they are modified and you're happy with how with the way they look you can convert them to a selection and going from a selection you can actually create our flames look so let's start and by normally I always start somewhere outside the graphics because you draw the path and you actually loop all the way back to the point where you started from so it's always good to keep it somewhere outside so you don't have any jagged edges inside and let's say uh, we'll go in somewhere around here so that will be our first part of the flame and what you do you basically just draw out a simple simple shape of the flames that you'd like to have. Uh, let's this one get deeper, curve it a bit more. So these are like control points, really, for how the how the flame will look like later. And you'll see in a second what I mean by that. Okay, nothing too fancy. And we'll exit here. And now I can loop back outside the graphics all the way to the point where we began from. And as you can see, when I mouse over it, it changes to the pen tool cursor. When it does, just click it and it f closes the whole path. And that's one finished shape. Uh, so that's step one. Step two is we're going to use some the tool called Convert Point Tool. What that allows you to do, it allows you to modify each of those points that we've put in and make those straight lines curved. If you click anywhere, you'll start, you'll see all of them again. But when you mouse over any of those points, the cursor changes. When it does, you click it, hold it and start dragging it. And as you can see, it will allow you to create curves which is something we're after so let's start by stretching all of them uh, be careful which way you stretch out because sometimes you'll pull the wrong si wrong way around like that and what you'll end up with is the curves going completely wrong way so you just rotate it all around to make it to make it look good and I'll quickly do all of them for the tips, you stretch it in one point, in sorry, in one direction, and then you leave, uh, uh, let go, and then you can grab the individual control points and modify just one side of it. So we want it to, we want a sharp tip. There we go. Stretch, 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 and. Uh, something like that hopefully that's visible enough I, I do recommend watching in highest quality setting the 1080p video because you'll be able to see all the detail that I'm actually working on otherwise it might be a bit blurry Let's 
a lot of it. I'll be. Oh, I'm almost done. And again, the tip. Rotate the other one. It's a really simple and effective tool to get the job done. And I did mention in one of the earliest earlier parts that for the selections of the tank or any other parts, you could, we could actually use the paths, and that's how you would do it. You would just draw the control points uh, around the uh, the shape of the tank, and then just use those curves to um, to uh, fit fit the shape, and you'd have the same kind of selection as we did. But instead, of we've used the quick mask and drawn. So we have the curves now, but they are in some places they are not looking really good. So if you click into one of them again, it actually resets, so you can you can play with it a little bit to make it look better. You click out to see the results. You click in now. When you've actually created the individual, you've converted the individual points. If you click at the line in between any two of them, you always get the control points from that side from both control points if that makes any sense um, so here also you might want to reposition your control point some at some stage so you do that by pressing control and grabbing it this allows you to actually modify where it sits and then you can just carry on and keep modifying shape to a point where you actually say that yeah that looks that looks all right uh, not the best looking flames in the world but they'll do so once you have your graphics in place your path set up as you would like it what we need to do is to convert the path to a selection and it's very simple to do all you have to do is just go to the path tab over here and we will have our work path with that we've just created and you just right click it choose make selection leave these options as default click OK and instead of the work path you will have a selection now so here we go back to the layers we'll create a new layer and what we'll do I have white plain white set as my foreground color we'll go to edit fill and we'll fill it with plain white there we go so let's rename that that's our flames one that's our layer for flames and to trim it down a very simple thing to do with our current layer selected with flames you press control and you click into the area over here on the new tank layer that grabs the selection of the tank layer and applies it so you can work with it on your flames layer and what we need to do now is invert the selection which you do by pressing control plus shift plus I and you press delete to select anything that's outside our tank there we go that looks like a that looks like a nice job already but it's missing a few things so let's add if you double click on your flames layer somewhere around here don't click it on, on the name because it will actually make uh, it will actually allow you to rename it so click somewhere on the right hand side and uh, what we'll do we'll switch some extra extra <laughs> effects on. We'll do a stroke. We'll do a stroke that's two pixels wide and the color we'll pick a maybe darkish blue color. There we go. And to make it more look more 3D we'll add a drop shadow. Um, we'll move it a bit further down. There we go. That looks good okay that but as you've noticed there is one problem on this side it applied the stroke the blue stroke as well 
So what we need to do is to duplicate duplicate this layer, and you do that by just selecting your layer and pressing Control J or right clicking and choosing duplicate layer. Flames one copy, we'll call it Flames two. Okay, that. Now we don't need the effects on the, the on Flames two, so you right click it and you choose Clear Layer Style. That removes all the effects that we've added and uh, there is one more thing to do you go below the flames one you create a new layer which is a blank one and to remove to make the effects permanent what you need to do you need to flatten the layer on top of another layer that removes the effects and you do that simply by Creating a blank layer underneath the layer you want to flatten, you select the flames one in our in our example, and you press Control E. Bam. Now we don't have the FX symbol anymore. What we have is just one layer with all the effects applied, and we can't do anything about it anymore. So, what we will do now, we will actually delete that area because we don't need it because we have our clean selection over here. So let's do that, then we just select the eraser tool and we'll just make a nice soft and we'll remove it over here there we go, and a little bit here there we go. So once we have that in place, if we switch the other one on, there you go. It doesn't go anywhere. And by accident, we've also achieved a very cool effect. If you select our Flames 2 layer and drop the opacity a little bit to like 75, look at that. All of a sudden, it appears like it's actually painted on top of the, of the tank. And we have semi-transparent reflections going through. So, if we zoom out to a full extent, well, they hardly look like proper flames, but you get the idea. That's how you apply graphics on top of our custom paint job. And that pretty much concludes the workshop, or at least everything I have planned. If you'd like to see some something else, if you'd like to, if you, if you if you had a request, I'm more than happy to help. I'll show you. I'll record it. Just let me know, and uh, we'll have some more fun with Photoshop. Thanks a lot, guys, and I hope you enjoyed it.